I will in a minute. Good. Just setting things up. All right, hi everyone. Uh, welcome. This is um, this is the Art and Word Show uh, to celebrate Lynn Montano's life and career. Uh, we sent out a call for art for people to um, either uh, submit some art inspired by Linda's, Linda's life and career or um, their interpretation of what art as healing means to them. We've got some great, um, great submissions, some visual art. There are some video performance pieces, some spoken word in the other room, which is also on the gallery YouTube page uh, and a few videos of Linda's as well, uh, some recent ones. Um, so we're gonna go through uh, the show today. Some of the artists are here to talk about their work um, and some of them are here um, virtually. So you know, say a few words. Oh, well, not really much to add other than just to welcome everybody and to say that not only was the show uh, inspired by, by Linda, but it was guided by Linda too. And, and her, her guidance has been, it's been really wonderful to yes, have yes. These, these weeks. It's a great experience. Prepared. Yes. So we'll start with. All right. Well, we're going to give each artist three minutes a piece. Um, artists who are here and that are listening, there'll be a chime at two at the two thirty point, and then he will be cut off at three minutes because uh, we're on a very tight we're on a very tight time frame. So you can do a lot of damage in three minutes, but you can say a lot in three minutes. Yes. All right, great. Uh, the first people we're going to bring up are Mick Horowitz and Celeste Graves, who's uh, very known to a lot of people here, who are going to be doing a performance uh next week is yes. it next weekend and then the following weekend as well yes so coleridge is kubla khan okay okay so i'm just gonna read our statement a recent diagnosis of parkinson's disease initially threatened to put the kibbish on my performing career which i have sustained for more than 50 years but embracing my dear friend and occasional collaborator linda montano's belief in artist healing i decided to revive the performance book in a way that is scaled down to meet my diminishing physical capabilities. Our rehearsals so far have had a salubrious effect on me. I'm working on this project with Celeste and Gilles Nalkeen has convinced me that I may still be able to share what I do best, despite the downward spiral of my affliction. That's it. Bravo. <laughs> You do have a minute left. A minute and a half. So yes, well, it's been just like a dream come true almost to be actually working with uh, Gilles uh, and of course Mikhail Horowitz. And I have not been dancing over the last decade as I've been doing Tai Chi. Linda have given me a, the chance to bring Tai Chi to my dance. And um, as far as healing, I feel like it's just a whole new infusion of working with these, these two guys and just getting back into dance and performing. And um, so in that way, yeah, the resilience and the drive, you know, just to kind of keep me alive and keep me, I'm becoming even more of an artist, I feel like. I just, art per se has become so prominent in my vista. And she's so good to work with. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope to see you guys when we present our poem. And thank you for being here last week. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah that was fun. And the week before to do the chicken dance. Okay. Um, we're going to, as you can see, there's there's art in, in three rooms. Uh, so we're going to start um, in the other room. Um, there's a few pieces. Um, then we're going to then we're going to do what talk about the work in this room, and then we'll all move into the next room um, and talk about the work in there. Uh, either I'll be presenting uh, the, the work for the artists that aren't here or Suzanne will. Uh, so the first piece we're going to talk about is by Anna Bergen. Um, for you folks that are here online, I'm going to bring up, well, actually, I'll show it to everyone here, too. Yeah, looks good. This is Anna's piece. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So N says, inspired by the theme of this exhibition, my photograph embodies the concept of healing symbolized through immersion in a radiant golden hue, hue light and purification via the embrace of water. That's your statement. Okay. That's a quick one. Yes. Okay, the next piece is by uh, Claudia Berlinski. Uh, Claudia couldn't be here either. It's the uh, four metal photographs that are in the corner. So these here. Okay. All right, and then I will read Claudia's piece. While at Ohio State, I studied under Linda Ventano during her year as a university artist or a visiting artist at the university. Linda had established art in everyday life a few years earlier and was in the midst of a seven year performance based on the seven shots. Work of the students in class with Linda was influenced by the philosophy put forth in this book. And each of us participated in a performance of Linda's at the end of her visiting artist gig. The experience of studying with Linda immensely impacted my life and the way I thought about her own, her own artwork. Although I no longer participate in performance art, Evidence of my time with Linda makes appearances in my work, particularly in photography. The images presented here explore the intersection of place and experience. They examine the fugitive nature of personal history and memory. The images emphasize the importance of the mundane in life and the imagery becomes metaphor for such intimacies. All right. Um, Janet Roberts, who is with us virtually here. Oh, there you go, Janet. Let me pull you up. Thanks. Um, so I was really attracted to the art equals healing um, theme of this exhibit. It, it really is that for me. It, it always gives me a shot of serotonin when I draw or paint. Um, so I submitted a few pieces that kind of came out of um, kind of the pain of being a woman in this day and age. You know, I think women are under constant political assault. Um, there's people trying to regulate our bodies and strip us of our rights and demean us and harass us sexually. And it's been particularly painful in recent years. Um, everyone has heard the news about Harvey Weinstein and we elected a president who bragged about grabbing women inappropriately. The Supreme Court reversed Roe v. Wade. So I think I felt a lot of despair and anger about these events. And I, I found myself channeling those feelings into my drawings. Um, so this piece, one week, I do weekly figure drawing and the model showed up with a stuffed snake. <laughs> and so it took me straight to the Garden of Eden. I, 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 I like to put... Um, creative backgrounds in my figure drawings. And I like to draw sometimes on the masters. And so I was looking for Garden of Eden paintings and I found this one by um, Peter Paul Rubens and Jan Bruegel, the elder. And it was called The Garden of Eden with the Fall of Man. And I felt like it figured Adam quite prominently in a dominant role. And I decided to switch that up um, and replaced him with an ostrich. <laughs> And uh, there, that's how this piece came to be. And the piece, uh, the piece that Janet is talking about is in the room over there with Eve. All right. Thank you, Janet. You're welcome. Okay, next we have uh, Eileen Power. Hi, I'm online here. All right, great. Let me just show everyone. Eileen's work. That's in the other room as well. All right, welcome, Eileen. Let me uh, let me pull so you up. I, I think it's very timely that I should follow Janet um, because uh, feminine and feminist uh, themes have sprung up in my work, um, and um, uh. Why do you sew, you know, your bra and panties into a used drop cloth, I guess is the question people would ask, but I'll bring it back to in um, most of my practice, um, I, I enjoy experimenting with the, I wonder what would happen if question. 
And a couple of years back, I decided to take an old bra and panties and ink them up several times and run them through an etching press in various colored inks. And I, I, for those of you who can see this behind me on my bookcase here, I've just uh, taped one of them so that you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But after the, um, the inking up and the printmaking, um, I wasn't going to toss the ink filled um, underwear. Um, I thought about another idea of how to upcycle it into art. And my partner, Steve was um, undergoing um, treatment at Sloan Kettering for cancer. And um, <clears throat> I, I may have trouble getting through this without a tear, everyone, but bear with me, I will get through it. Um, he passed away on June 3rd. And um, at one point when he was, <clears throat> there we go, I've got myself back, undergoing um, a clinical trial at Sloan Kettering, I, uh, I took a piece of one of his drop cloths. You see, he had had a wall finishings business and his drop cloths were just full of these wonderful paint splatters. So I washed them in the washing machine. And uh, when I went into the city with him for this clinical trial, um, I knew I'd be sitting by his bedside for the better part of a month in uh, Sloan Kettering. So I brought things with me that I could sew by hand and that I small pieces that I could work with by hand. And so one of them was like, well, let me unite uh, something that of mine with something is of his. And I did so by like hand sewing it into a piece of his drop cloth. At one point, you'll laugh uh, to hear that the nurse came into the room and uh, she sort of glanced over at what I was doing. And then she quickly like turned her head away as if she had seen something that she wasn't supposed to see. And I laughed and I said, you're not imagining it. I'm sewing my underwear into his drop cloth. And I said, I'm an artist, he's an artist. This is what we do. And uh, she howled laughing and I'm sure she told the whole, her whole staff about it. So um, for me, uh, then since he's passed, I've been, uh, I've begun a, a, a more work using his uh, discarded uh, drop cloths. And I find uh, not only making art to be healing, but making art directly using, you know, something that was his. So thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Okay. All right, we're going to bring up uh, Pesha Altman now. Uh, Pesha's an artist in New York City. And let me bring, bring up your piece. Oops, that's not him. No. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, Great. Yeah. So this okay. is just you see mm -hmm. as you walk in through in the hallway. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Greeting from Great. Manhattan. So this is a very small piece, uh, eight by ten, oil on panel, and you can see a woman in a bus tub wearing a nightgown. Um, her face is blue. Uh, the water running and the window facing a uh, urban landscape. Uh, that was the first painting that I did of a series of my vertigo painting. I was traveling in Europe uh, and arrived to Prague. Um, it was February 23, about seven months ago, eight months ago. And uh, while traveling, I arrived to Prague and three nights after arriving, I got a terrible vertigo attack that lasted um, a week. And after a week, I went to the emergency room. Um, but even before I could lift my head, I started sketching the situation for me to document what's happening to me. My entire, my entire work is about my life. It's kind of a visual diary. Do documenting what's happening to me uh, helped me understand the situation. 
look, it has some humor also, you know, being the entire night in a bus tub underwater, I couldn't move. My brother that was with me said that's very accurate painting. And I continued the theory, um, how I felt a week after, what I did a week after, uh, before going to the hospital, and then the exercises that I did um, to recover, uh, uh, kind of eye exercises and, uh, and um, physiotherapy and acupuncture. So that is a series that documents that experience. I'm happy to say that I feel much better now. I'm in my studio every day and I work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, now we have Josepha. So a person here. Do you want to go? Are we going to the room or should I just? Um, I am going to bring up um, bring up your two pieces on on oh. on the computer here. One is in in this, the the uh, green room, and then there's another um, in the other room. Um, let's let's bring those up. Okay. And they are both pieces to Linda. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes, right behind you. <laughs> and then um, this is the second. Oh, no. That's in the second one. All right. Josefa, you want to come up here or you want to stay for there? Uh, yeah, if you can come up here, that would be great. Thank you. Um, both pieces are, were, are directly inspired by Linda. The first one is based on a wonderful exhibit at Dorsky Museum. Um, very large exhibit, but I wanted to make sure that um, I, I Gave credit where credit is due, which is that it it based on an installation one of the one of her many installations that she did at Dorsky, um, and I was intrigued by this particular one because it's the baby, a, a doll, and then a skeleton figure, and I I didn't think that Linda was really talking about life, death, about that. She was the doll for me represented as kind of the inner child or the real self. And the uh, skeletal was kind of like the um, the false personality that we develop as we get older, you know, as we and that and that the baby was the real self, and the skeleton was like the persona that we all put on um, for society. So that I thought Linda did such a magnificent job, sort of in my opinion, representing that idea. But um, and then the other painting is called Twenty Four Hours of Listening. And that was uh, me listening to a Zoom celebration of Linda's 80th birthday that was um, sponsored by Franklin Furness. And I mean, hundreds of people were on Zoom. Performance artists, poets, former students of Linda, celebrating Linda for, I think it was 22 hours, right? But I only listened um, and I, it started in the wee hours in the morning in order to take account of all the people that were on the call who were living all around the world. So all the time zones and everything. So I went, painted it while listening to all this wonderful celebration. And that's what that, this, this I call it 24 hours. It actually took me 24 hours, but, and um, and I did an endurance uh, like Linda did. Linda was on the call the whole time. <laughs> 22 hours. So, and so, thank you. 
All right, thank you, Gonzaga. Is Michael here? No? Michael Doyle? Okay. All right. Um, Michael Doyle has two pieces. Uh, the first one is in the other room, the little small uh, figures that are that are lining up on the wall. These are And then his second installation is right here. Okay. Uh, so I will go ahead and read. Okay, his, his, uh, a little a little piece about a uh, little a little line about the piece that's in the other room. A constel. It's called um, Habingers. A constellation to portray a presence of beings, a myriad of messengers, with each being both soothsayers as well as silent witnesses. This second piece is called Tohu Wa Bohu. Tohu Wa Bohu. Uh, a scenario of a state of mind where one feels bewildered, astonished, and poised on the cusp of the moment before transformative insight an epiphany born within a creative and generative chaos. Though formally working in the more, though formally working in the uh, more labor intensive material of stone and metal, I now consider just about any and all materials to utilize. Countless found objects, broken parts of things of unknown origins, discarded toys, mundane, mundane degree, in its many forms are just examples of things I may pick up while walking along a riverbank or roadside if it somehow speaks to me. These collected items are now a multitude to choose from. I see them as creative springboards for ideas that permit me to make absurd and creative connections. It is the element of the absurd in particular that interests me. The purposeful nonsensical juxtapositioning of found and self-made objects allows me to better detach and tab into the resources of intuition and inspiration of the subconscious. I find these methods to be extremely freeing therapeutic. All right, so those are Michael's. Timothy, is Timothy here? He's gonna join us by Zoom. Um, I guess not. Timothy, Timothy Anderson is an artist living in North Carolina. He has one of the videos um, in the other room and it's called How Things Work. Um, it's a passing back and forth of a man and a woman uh, lighting, um, uh, lighting a match. I'm sorry I don't have his, his statement here, um, but it is available to read, uh, post it on the door if you'd like. All of the statements for the videos are on the door. Um, okay, Patty Gibbons. Uh, Patty's an artist in, um, Kingston, that's Patty's piece right there. <clears throat> uh, we're in this. We're in this room now. Okay, Patty Gibbons, uh, February. This is called "Where Are You?" Number two, the in between. February fourteenth, twenty twenty one, Valentine's Day. My children have called me to tell me their father has passed. We had a complicated and painful relationship. He died alone. No one should die alone. February 18th, 2021. My brother's landlord calls me to tell me my brother just had a cardiac arrest. I get a call shortly after that he passed. He was my Irish twin. No final goodbyes or I love yous. Devastated and overwhelmed with sorrow, Complicated by the isolation of COVID and not having friends and family to share in the grief, I painted and drew, pondering e eternity, the journeys of the soul, trying to grasp the finality of death. Where do we go? Where does our vital energy go? Is there an afterlife? Or is this all that there is? As a narrative artist, these works visually illuminate the heartbreak of loss, a journey into the master, into the mystery of life after death, and provide a means of coming to terms with death and to heal the wounds of grief nationally and regionally that no, didn't to heal the wounds of grief. Sorry about that. All right. Will Nixon. Uh, this is Will's piece here at the Crow. 
Come on up, Will. <laughs> um, I, you know, be a little different. I, Robert sent out a call for submissions, art equals healing. My instant reaction was not for me, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't really think of that, you know, like this photograph, I think of trying to create something intriguing, a little disturbing, uh, you know, something that'll catch you, stop you, make you sit and look and wonder what's going on. I don't really think of it as healing. So I can't say that art equals healing caught me. The photo of Linda Montana, you know, with her eyes closed and wearing this golden turban, I instantly knew the photo I was gonna take for this exhibit. So that's this photo. Then came my least favorite part of submitting to Robert or anybody, this little box called artist statement. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess I'm old school enough to think I shouldn't have to explain the painting or the photograph. <laughs> in the world of poetry, when the poet starts explaining the poem, you're in trouble. But I, uh, you wouldn't do it. Um, for, as a favor to Robert, I thought, you know, people ask, what is, what is that? So I, I started filling out that box. I started telling the story behind this photograph. And I certainly had a lot to say. I thought, I can fill this box out. And before I was done with the box, I thought, not only will I fill the box out, I'll, I'll, I'll do something I've never done before, which is do like a Spalding Gray monologue, <laughs> telling the story behind this. Suzanne said yes, Robert said yes. And then I discovered it was 10 minutes, which I didn't mm -hmm. think initially. So I'm now working on that. Mick is performing next week. I think I'm his warm up for that. Um, by the time I get to my 10 minutes next week, I, I, I bet you I've gone through 60 hours of writing about this mask, talking about this mask, all the stories involved in this mask. So it's been, you know, completely unexpected, unexpected and kind of amazing journey to try and think of all that, all that lies behind this photograph. So thank you for sending me on this journey. <laughs> All right, thanks, Will. Uh, Will will be here next week and then uh, the following week as well. We'll have a repeat of the broadcast. Okay, uh, Kate Masters. Kate, there were three in the series here. And Suzanne's going to tell you a little bit about them. It is a little bit. There's a very short statement. The Rapture series explores the point where land meets air and both become ethereal, an unworldly place of peace and wonder. Okay, and then this, this abstract piece here is by um, Vian Brochet. Uh, Vian lives in Chicago. It's called Silver Lining. Silver Lining is a painting that speaks about the search for light in difficult situations. Staying hopeful even amid dark times will bring out the silver lining that will sail us away to a better place, be it, be it our mindset or even an actual place. Art as a form of meditative practice keeps me engaged in finding solutions through art making. As philosopher Carl Jung puts it, finding one identity through embracing one shadow does, does need to occur in the road to self-love. Joan, is Joan Harmon here? Oh, you're here, great. Oh yeah, come on up, Joan. <laughs> um, and this is Joan's piece in the back. So this is called Salvage. And I, the way it happened, I didn't plan this piece. I started, I've always loved clay. So I started a series of work a while back. Um, after researching the way that large vessels were made by women in Africa. And I kind of wanted to get back to working with just mud and, and earth and the simplest possible uh, techniques. So I made this piece, it's more you know what it is, and then I put it in the kiln and it exploded. So the top popped off and this piece fell off and so then I find that mistakes and disasters sort of like are sort of the most creative moment. And that's when you're allowed to really take another path. So 
I went and cast all, I cast fingers of friends and family and uh, out of cement and put them on the top of this and then they are the things that are holding up the broken vessel, sort of as, and, so, and, and then the, the name salvage came, you know, the, you don't think of the word salvage as to save, but I thought that was pretty great. So just kind of representing, embodying how family and friends help us get through stressful times. I also, you know, was really attracted to the title of the show, Art Equals Healing. I think it's a fabulous theme for a show and a direction, you know, that not many, many galleries go. And I think it has added an element of, of spirituality to this. Um, it was a great opening. Uh, so, and that I'm, I'm happy to be a part of. Um, and I also love ritual. And I was also born a very good little Catholic girl. So I like ritual objects and I like the idea of the sacred. Um, Jesus, that's for me. That's <laughs> extra time. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? <laughs> And if, if anyone has any questions for any of the artists, please you know, just raise your hand and, and um, be happy to ask. Uh, we're actually running behind schedule. <laughs> Robin, come on up. Nice surprise. I wasn't expecting you. Oh, yeah. I'm glad. I uh, forgot to tell you this is Robin's <laughs> piece. <laughs> well, uh, Robin Adler. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Robin Adler. I am an abstract artist and I live and work in Woodstock. And um, Art Equals Healing actually really describes my art process because I go to the canvas, a blank canvas with nothing really in mind about what the outcome will be. I actually go there, I create art to connect to my own spirit and see what's inside. Sometimes I have no idea. So what I do is, um, like with this painting, which is called Drifting Into Focus, I um, start with layering, this is acrylic paint, um, just layering different shapes and finding colors and relationships until I see a bigger relationship um, start to come into focus. And then I will um, enhance the, that relationship with, you know, by adding more layers, color, more interest or texture, um, pattern. Um, so that is very much my process. So um, since, you know, art equals healing really um, describes my, my own process, um, I feel like um, this exhibit came at the perfect time. Now, drifting into focus, um, I painted at the end of 2022. Um, at the very end, I think I finished it December 30th and was really reflecting on the last two years of the pandemic. I am um, a healing professional. Um, I'm a, an artist, but also a healing professional, but um, a psychotherapist as well. And I was really reflecting on um, the ways I had been changed by the, process, by the pandemic and um, good ways, bad ways. Um, I also was reflecting on, um, you know, what, what things were more important to me, what, what um, certain things were receding and other things were coming forward. Um, you know, certain things were bigger, certain things became very small <laughs> for me. Um, so this piece is very much about um, that, that period of time making meaning of the pandemic and watching things sort of drift. In this case, I really feel like these are my priorities, right? So drifting into focus rather than a lot of times if there's um, a time of um, great change or trauma, maybe your priorities might shift suddenly. But for me, it was a really slow drift in trying to understand myself. And that's what I do through art as I try and understand myself. Thanks, Robin. I just wanted to uh, backtrack just a little bit because um, I did find the um, the statement for T uh, Timothy Anderson, uh, one of the uh, video awards. As I said, it's called an exercise in making things work. 
In an exercise in making things work, performers light a match on their bodies and pass it back and forth until it extinguishes or burns down to their fingertips and must be dropped. Then another match is lit and the act continues until the contents of one matchbox is exhausted. It's about 10 minutes. Uh, the video here is, is a condensed version, it's five minutes. Their performance frames relationships as endurance exercises. Relationships with other people, with the world, and with oneself are posited to be constant cycle of reciprocity. To make these relationships subsist, they must be tended to both when they are pleasurable and when they are difficult, challenging, or literally painful. Uh, so that's uh, Timothy Anderson. Um, Christina Tanaglia. Uh, we have two pieces by Christina. Um, the one that's hanging on the wall and then the, uh, the piece on wood on the bottom here. And Suzanne is gonna tell us a little bit about Christina's pieces. Christina writes, at a performance of Linda Montano as Bob Dylan, Bob told me to be kind to time and then sang to me. I cried through the whole thing. I had never thought of or experienced time in that way. Be kind to time. I've thought about this continually and persistently since. I'm not necessarily good at it. I'm terrible at it, actually. But having this as a touch point for myself has been profound in both my life and practice. My work happens slowly, slower than it appears, and questions about how we recognize time, labor, and presence are always at hand. A couple of years later, I sat at a house in Woodstock singing to my glens with a group of people guided by Linda. Much of my work references insides and outsides, what we hold, what holds us, what we carry, how we use, how we gather, how things function, especially how things multifunction. How are things contained and what is doing the containing? How do we situate ourselves, our hands, our bodies, within a choreography of everyday materials, objects, and motions? How do we situate our own awareness? Openings, closures, repairs, extension, the way things are held, propped, leaned, and offered, and all come into play. Human anatomies and systems combine the structural organizations and methodologies, methodologies, imbalances, awkwardness, humor, and tensions service. I am deeply grateful to you, Linda, for your work. <clears throat> your singular attention to the world, your bravery in humanity, and for allowing us to experience all this through and with you. Thank you. Oh, Christine. Mm -hmm. Man. Uh, we have one more piece in this room. <laughs> it is the collage right above by um, Celine, uh, Celine Cardwell. Celine, you're not here, are you? This one I am going to have to read from here. Depression has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. Collage has helped me soothe my soul. Short, but to the point. <laughs> All right, Joan. Come on up. Joan is a, another, another one of our um, performers on... Um, on video, um, comic extraordinaire. Come on up, tell us about uh, what you got going on in there. I don't wanna be the first one let out at a hostage scene. I'll tell you that right now. I wanna be one of the ones that hangs back. I wanna be able to do some healing wherever I am. I do not wanna be the face of dire circumstances. So I'm gonna think, what would Linda do right now? maybe put on a pair of chicken feet and uh, give a lecture on uh, how we are not the descendants of primates, but we are all primates. I think about that rope that connected and really it was connected to one single person who, by the way, our neighbor next door bought a house from Hesh. So it was connected at one end and to another person for a year. But did it really connect just to them or are we really all connected? So I used a wash line 
and um, hung up laundry. And uh, the laundry I hung up is my work, Comedy with a Conscience. And um, as the clothesline gets pulled in, you will see and hear the laundry. My favorite one, which wasn't my favorite then, but now is, is my patriotic bra. I put it on and it says, remember the fallen. <laughs> the IDF has said there are no good people in Gaza. I think Linda Montano would question that. I know I do. Take care, guys. Right, we're now we're going to move into the next room, so we're going to take a um, little break so everyone can uh, reposition in the next room, and then we'll pick it up from there. Oh, it's hot. I'm going to set it down. Scramble for position. Oh, okay. I didn't know where you wanted to be. Yeah, I think here is good. Oh, hi, Jim. Jim, here's your piece. You see him? Oh, great. Thank you. You see it, Jim? Can you hear him? Yeah, yeah. Great. All right, we're, we're taking just a little break to, to reposition in here. Okay. <laughs> no, we're good. Thank you. Yes, Maybe this isn't too bad. Start the artwork higher. So thank you. Let's do Jim. Yeah. 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 We need to keep going. I was going to go to the bathroom, but oh, not like. Okay. Let me grab some. <laughs> Sure. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. Yeah. 
Okay, I know she's she Hi, Sonia. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Good to see you. Actually, for the folks that are on Zoom or watching, uh, while we're here, let me just take you around and show you the show you the spaces. We have a screening room in here where the work is very dark in here, but you can't see, but there are videos playing. We have about uh, eight different videos, uh, film, performance, spoken word, and it's all on a uh, a uh, a loop. This is some of the other work. Wow. Hanging in the window is one of Linda's pieces, Christ. It's a little dark, you may not be able to see all the work. And then we have in the center of the room, we have a little archive table for a, uh, a uh, timeline of Linda's life and career. Yeah. Okay, let's start up again. Let's continue on. We're back on time. I also wanted to procrastinate a little bit because some of the folks that are joining us on Zoom, um, we have certain time frame timelines for them to join, and um, we're about ten minutes behind, so or ahead, right? Ten minutes ahead of where we're supposed. To. So, um, so welcome to the second room. Uh, I did want to mention that when we when we opened the exhibit. Um, we had a celebration here at the Lamb House, the Lamb Center. Um, Linda, um, as she tends to, do, you know, does does a duration performance. And one of the things that she wanted to do was um, blindfold herself. So we blindfolded her here at the gallery. She stayed blindfolded for a week. Was uh, staying at the home of a, of, of her friend Jennifer Zacking, who um, during that week uh, created a sculpture while blindfolded. Every time she went into the studio, she would blindfold herself before and create a sculpture. And this is what she created during that week when, when she was blindfolded. So I wanted to pass this around so everyone could get a close look at it. Okay. Perfect timing. All right.
Big head John, right? Okay. Hi, Matt. Perfect timing. We're going to bring you up right now. Welcome. How are you? I know you just you just you just got in. Ah, you're not connected to audio yet. There you go. Hi, Matt. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can now. Sorry, Mr. Sosin, about these settings. Excellent. Uh, perfect timing. Uh, you're you're up. Um, so we've been going. Through, we've been going through all of the work. Uh, uh, Matt Rogerson is um, from the UK. He has one of the pieces um, in, uh, in uh, that uh, uh, a, um, a film piece. Well, uh, so Matt, this is everyone. And this hello, is everyone. Uh, so please, Matt, tell us tell us about your piece and um, and how it it's been healing for you. So um, my piece is a kind of inter inter interdisciplinary um, live art slash performance art slash uh, sonic art um, piece, which utilizes um, commercially available uh, biofeedback technology, in this instance, um, EEG or electroencephalography, in order to um, extract and extrapolate uh, my, my brain waves and uh, data bend that into data readable into an algorithm uh, facilitated by a Maximus D and is sonified and visualized. And the, the um, oh, what's the word? The, uh, sorry, um, the, the stimuli, um, which is in real time, uh, gestated and produced via the um, the brain waves modulating the algorithm. That in turn is uh, received via my own cognition, i.e., my brain, and it creates a biofeedback loop. So it's a cascading, increasing continuum of uh, provocation. And it's specifically tailored to induce a provocation with my uh, uh, my autism spectrum. And the way in which I find it healing in that I see it as, in terms of having an audience presence, it's very much a relational act. And it draws upon themes of endurance art, in the, in whereby the um, the kind of altered state I am in is kind of I am in drum performance is a, a simulacrum of I guess a quote quotidian experience of being of of going through day-to-day -day life with the autistic hypersensitivities and hyposensitivities. And um, they, I, I liken it to say, if you're playing an instrument in front of a piano and the, the strings in the piano um, resonate sympathetically with what you're playing. And I feel that in that kind of, analogy the um, the audience receiving me and the visuals and the sound or cascading i hope elicit a sense of sympathetic resonance so yes that's how i and it's that kind of relational act that inter interrelational act, which I personally find um, healing through that kind of solidarity of highlighting a marginalized experience, which I believe is over pathologized to the point of being problematized. So, yes. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, I believe I finished. Sorry, I should have made that clear. All right, thank you so much. I'm glad. I'm glad you're able to join us. 
So thank you very much for me too. I'm very thank you, thankful for this opportunity. Thank you. Happy to have you here. Thank you. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, we have um, two pieces by uh, Rebecca Ray H. Uh, first one is here. This is called The Child. Now, this is, this is called Be Decided by You. And then the second piece is in the back called The Child, which I will turn up for everyone. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. With this first piece. Okay, great. So Rebecca says about to be decided by you. Making this picture was a pleasant experience for me. I felt really free, just like drawing on the hospital walls when I was a young child. It was my favorite activity, which took me away from the real world. I believe art is a universal language which mirrors all our unconscious psyche. Once the picture leaves my studio into the world, it's the viewer bringing themselves into the conclusions of a picture. I got this one over here next to the statue, the child. But she, she practices both of these statements with, in honor of Linda Montano, I made a dozen drawings with art and heat in mind when I was in Socrates for a while this summer. I followed the journey of the 14 stations and then drifting off to wherever as a meditation, just letting the water line and color guide. Often looking back at what shows up on paper, the image is like a spotlight on a dense landscape of my psyche, which is both beautiful and scary, familiar yet so distant. I look at the picture now, a month after it was finished, I see the child, from the ancient Chinese mythology of the world's creation. According to the myth, Nizr made a mistake by being a ruthless child who shamed his family. He didn't consider what he did was wrong, being stubborn and defiant. He gave up his physical body to his birth parents to become his true self, okay, suicide often considered an honorable act in some Asian cultures, the ultimate act of sacrifice and defiance for a higher cause. The gods, some say the Buddha, brought me back to life by transforming the lotus into his new physical body. He is the first generation skateboarder, riding fire wheels, traveling by wind. He is energetic, spontaneous, curious, compassionate, a symbol of freedom. He's been showing up in my artwork in different shapes and form. And I'll add that when I uh, first saw this, I thought, oh my goodness, this is the clan. This is a picture of a clan's person. How interesting. And then there's a clan in there. Says, so I had all of these stories in my head. <laughs> you two thought of it, yeah. I so, see. yeah, and so when I saw Rebecca, I, and, 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 and so I read her statement, I said, Rebecca, I, I just I saw, saw somebody that totally different. I was sure this is a trans person growing up in the South. You know, this was just really, really meaningful. She said, well, it can be. I always believe that a picture is not finished until the viewer has a response. And that response is just fine. <laughs> so that was my experience. Anyway, Rebecca Ray. All right, great. <clears throat> Uh, Edith, come on out. All right, we have uh, Edith Corzan now, uh, which is the piece right behind us. Let's uh, let's bring that up. Here we go. Welcome, Edith. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is my painting. I'm a, I've been practicing art for fifty years, and basically, I'm, I live the life of a sort of a nomad. I moved around. I grew up in Texas. Um, this reflects my uh, emotional pathos after the COVID pandemic and I lost many friends and uh, I saw I saw this titian of uh, the rape of Europa in uh, Boston in this Isabel Gardner's uh, collection and I, for some reason I, I believe in the unconscious and I believe that when you paint you can teach yourself 
things that are like unconscious in your own psyche. And I believe that it all kind of merged together. And I ended, I realized, well, the red is sort of a life, it's my life force because I'm, I'm still alive after all of the, the boom, boom of the pandemic. So escaping on the vehicle of my art. I've always gone to art for healing. And it's always helped me get a new feeling of being alive and being, being stronger. So um, I also, I presented to my maiden name, my pain on the floor. My name's the floor. Olga, are you here? Is that you that came in? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Oh, great, wonderful, yes. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, yeah, maybe you can see also me now. All right, good. Let's see if, um... oh, here we go, wonderful. Uh, so... Yes, yes, I'm good, I'm good, thank you. How are you? This is, this is Olga Belsito. Um, Olga is uh, joining us from Italy. Yes, exactly. Hi, everybody. Hi, hello. Olga, I did want to mention this is a reproduction of the original. The original was much larger and it would have exactly. um, uh, very expensive to get it here from, from Italy. Uh, <laughs> but the original is available and it's a really beautiful. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Honestly, yes. And, and tell us about this piece and how art equals healing for you. Yes, um, well, I started thinking about this um, uh, work back in the 2018. Uh, well, sometimes I work without uh, even doing a sketch. And this was uh, the, the, the case. So after I found it again in uh, 2022, because you know, here um, in Florence, Italy, uh, there is a space where you can go and you can uh, leave your work. And uh, it was uh, what happened with this work. I left uh, there, this place is named Art with Love. So people go paint and uh, leave uh, the, uh, their work. When I saw again in 2022, I told myself, uh, this will be a um, solar plexus. Um, it is done with oil on canvas and uh, mixed um, uh, media that is uh, um, sand, synthetic sand, and uh, also um, oil, basically, and the pigment also. Uh, so uh, this is the period. And, uh, but, uh, you know, um, I was thinking about doing a painting on chakra from 2010, and, uh, but without a, a scheduled date, but just when I had a good idea to do um, painting about the chakra. So not sure if it's, uh, I, I was clear, but I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Olga. Oh, Linda, this, this is all. And... <laughs> okay. Great, wonderful. Thank you so much, Olga. I'm really glad you were able to join us. Thanks to you. Thanks to you to having given me this uh, opportunity. Uh, my pleasure. I think it fits in beautifully with the show, especially with the chakras. Okay. Now we're going to bring in. Um... Uh, just, sorry, may I tell you one thing? Uh, uh, additional one thing, just one small thing. I mean, I was um, uh, influenced by, the, by Lisa Montano on this work because she worked on the chakra a lot. She works uh, seven years from uh, 1984 and afterward. So I um, was looking into um, in the web to see if uh, there was a, a artist working on the well-being. And I found her that she worked on chakra. So she inspired me on this work. Sorry, I just wanted to add this point. I'm glad you did. Thank you. OK. OK, uh, next piece is by uh, Linda Turner. Linda's is. 
Well, actually, um, before we get to that, um, the piece you see hanging in the center here is Linda's. Linda, you want to talk about, about Christ? Could you get me that doll? Oh yes, I'm sorry. We should have we should have mentioned that before. Yes. This is one of seven, correct? Yeah, there's like the dwarfs. <laughs> the chakra dolls. Um so these all kind of don't go together. <laughs> but um uh, This is six months ago. This is Chakra Girl in the Three. And this is uh, Jesus who didn't have a heart until I just I just gave him a heart six months ago. And it's all totally subconscious. Super conscious, symbolic, infinite proud. And uh, if you'd all join me, throat chakra. You can bring your hand to your throat. And uh, we're going to do a uh, song to our little inner baby to make it as uh, sweet, loud, soft. Simple, complicated, and I'll be I'll be loud so you can be soft, or you can be loud and I'll be soft. One, two, three, go. I love you. You are such a strange looking baby, but I love you. And you have a heart. And I gave you a heart and you. Aha, uh -huh. you have a throat. You can speak up now, you little cutie pie. <laughs> you little adorable girl and boy. I'm feeding you nice milk and a nice things to eat and changing your diaper. And what do mothers do? I was <laughs> I'm taking you to the park someday. What do mothers do? <laughs> I'm reading you a story. And I'm I'm understanding your mood. I'm on, I'm thanking you for having your mood. I am right here for you. I am right here for you. I am right. I give you my heart. Thank you. I give you my heart. I give me. I give you. I give you art. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the throat chakra. There were seven red, orange, yellow, green, blue. This is green. That's blue. Oh, this is blue. The heart that's blue. And it's always good to make it visible for me. Sonic and visible. And thanks for the heart. Yeah. Uh, at the uh, at the emerge, Jesus has come down into his mother's arms, into his mother's. <laughs> no longer on the. <laughs> and I just want to take this occasion. Uh, it's been Herculean. It's but ex beyond Herculean. But time. Robert, Suzanne, and Kristen. This has been <laughs> miraculous. 
and, and so pleased and happy and honored. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. And we have a chicken also here. <laughs> I'd encourage everyone to, to have a look also at the, um, the uh, timeline table. Uh, there's some, some wonderful archival material um, and a little bit of a timeline of, of Linda's, Linda's career. And the chickens on the wall. Also. And we also have chickens on the wall as well, which you can take home for yourself if you'd like. Matthew, is that you? No? No, okay, sorry. All right, so we're going to move on to um, Linda Turner. Linda's piece is right above Linda. Um, this is hers. Okay. Uh, so Linda Turner, this is called Pattern Interrupted. Pattern Interrupted, a piece of my story is just that, a retelling of my journey, a roadmap in color, line and shape. It is a powerful thing to create and to be able to reflect upon a whole story all at once. Art allows for this. As with much of my work, when focused on self-reflection, I set an intention, this one to tell my story, and it told from left to right, my process intuitive. And as it so often is, is so often the case when trusting the process, this work rings true. On the left, there is softness, yet also a warning of darkness is quickly announced. There is wanting, sometimes given, sometimes not. There is pain, trauma, dullness, darkness. There is also vibrancy, endurance, and light. There is struggle in the process. And there is the honor of knowing my own healing journey through art and in life that provides an open holding for others. For I know in my soul and my bones what is possible. I honor, I honor patterns of surviving and thriving that develop at a very young state and age. I not only think about individuals, but also families, communities, nations. This series focuses on, on patterns when they no longer make sense and then explores what is possible. This process is often not pretty, for life can be a messy place. I simply offer that possibility remains, transformation happens, Hope is always lurking. The pieces shown here, while visually different from one another, both capture meaningful moments in time. It expresses how art has been, is now, will always be simply necessary. All right. So that is Linda Turner. Jim, you're up. Uh, Jim McKee. Jim is joining us from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, the sculptural piece right here is Jim's. Hi, Jim. Hi, hi. I'm actually in Michigan at the moment. <laughs> you are, okay. All right. And let me, uh, let me pull you up so everybody can see you. All right. All everybody, right. This is Jimmy K. Mackie. M-A-C-K-E-Y. Yep, we pronounce it Mackie, where I'm at. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So welcome, Jim. Tell us about uh, about the the piece, um, how it was uh, transformative and healing for you. Ah, uh, okay. Well, uh, first of all, I like to say how grateful I am to be a part of this show. It's it's indeed a great honor, and uh, I commend everybody that's in it. Um, I uh, I have a bipolar disorder, and I find that. Uh, Doing art is very healing, uh, and that's been for a number of decades. I've used art as a healing thing, and this uh, totem that I'm doing, I'm doing totems now. Uh, years ago, I read about uh, Robert Graves, uh, and uh, he introduced me to uh, the tree alphabet. And uh, it, that's the tree alphabet on the front of there. It's red from the bottom to the top. And it, it's uh, 
it says that the force is love. And uh, I find uh, sitting in the forest to be quite healing. And uh, so the whole mystical, magical thing of, of Robert Gray's uh, uh, is in play here. And I'm after making uh, primitive totems. Uh, because I think there's a lot of power in in the primitive. Uh, the uh, Shigir idol they found some years ago in a Siberian bog is my big inspiration. Uh, but the, the whole process, finding the wood, uh, you know, carving it with a chainsaw and using the Dremel, the, the whole process it is a spiritual exercise. It it is it is a healing thing, and that's all I have. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. I'm glad you were you were able to join us on the road. Yeah, that, I, yeah. It was it was pretty iffy. We're we're making a detour right now because. There's road construction. So, yeah, I, I'm glad it worked out. And uh, thanks for having me. I am too. And if you if you were at the gallery uh, last last uh, month during the collage show, Jim also had a piece in the window. It was the uh, countdown clock uh, of the end times. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jim. Hope to see you thank soon. You. Thank you. Okay, uh, Susanna is going to come up and tell us about uh, Kathleen McKenzie. Kathleen has one of the uh, one of the videos on um, in in the other room. Uh, Kathleen writes, "Enthusiasm for alternate filmmaking and art inspires me to make short video works that combine nature and dreamlike images. Uh, subjects may range from scenes in nature to human interaction." Images flow from classic to classic to phonetic and from contemplative to fraught as music changes from background support to active participation. Video images, appropriated film footage, improvised cello and ancient Celtic music and poetry with overlays of words are elements that I combine and use to shape my video works. So see her video and then this will make sense. Yeah, her, she, there's two two short videos, um, Reflections on uh, Nature and Healing, it's called. Okay. Susan, Susan Castro. Well, sure, of course, yeah. All right. Uh, so Susan has the sculptural piece. Let me bring it up. Uh... Thanks for being here. Thank you. Not a problem. Okay. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So when I got the uh, announcement for the show from Robert, I was so grateful because so much of my artwork has been about healing. And uh, so much of it has been about healing from a, a, a uh, experience of breast cancer, losing breast to cancer, as this figure has lost her breast to cancer. Uh, and over the years, I made, I don't know how many sculptures of women without of missing a breast, showing how they were still beautiful and that they uh, were heroic. And I made, I don't know, hundreds of textile breasts that I put in beautiful containers. And I only half realized this was self-designated art therapy use of this work, which I was so happy to have because I wanted to never have thought of that. So. Uh, so when I began work on this sculpture, I was thinking I, I had, I was already well into my thinking, and I was at the point where I realized that from deep wounds and from loss would come some kind of new life. And so I had the title for the sculpture, New Life from Old Wounds, before I actually made the sculpture. Um, so uh, the, the figure's body is in Turkey, it's hand sculpture. With, uh, this is uh, this is alpaca fiber. 
and so I can tell that was the truth. It's Delphi from that, and I'm uh, sure that I know that touching the fiber is already healing. Well, in COVID, when I put my hands in the fiber, I was like, the Lord is my shepherd, and that mm -hmm. energy just already set, give me equanimity, if that makes sense to you. Um, so uh, the body is kind of felt in. Uh, I put uh, stitches here and here, and they reminded me, I did it, but they reminded me of the stars that I have some stitches. Uh, stitches around my breast, and I'm sure many of you have been. How many of you have been on the lighthouse trail? Trail to Earth's Always Lighthouse. Sure. That is my favorite and by far my most healing journey. So I picked up a number of pieces. I'm sure you have stepped on the shell. So I've cards that I picked up there, and my Oh, my art mentioned and I said, how can I preserve these? And he said, paint them. So that's what I did, mm -hmm. right? And I used the same uh, uh, fiber and the same color here and here uh, to, to connect the wings from here to the new light here. This I picked up in the basement of my Manhattan co-op. Oh, uh, I said to the speaker, can I have this? And he said, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> So I need to say also, I did, I did do a, uh, a lot of the biography that's online, that like Linda, I went through a, quite a period of distancing myself from the religious and cultural tradition that I grew up with. The terror and the grief that I felt about the breast cancer returned me to my Jewish tradition, which lent me hope and equanimity, and wanted to share the, the, these resources to, with other people to whom I knew that they would be relevant. I gathered stories, made an artwork, and printed a big book called Hard Blessings, Jewish Way to Think of It. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mark. Such an extraordinary thought. Okay. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to present um, uh, Jesse Sanchez, which is the uh, the piece right behind uh, Susan's piece. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good, uh, right? I think, so, yeah. We were happy when we had this relationship, yes. Uh, Jesse says, the painting was done in an art therapy class. The ocean is my symbol to healing and spiritual restoration. A red rocking chair represents the urgent need to rest and comfort. The rocker is partly submerged in the water, like our minds are always partly engaged in internal introspection and self-awareness. The rocking chair has a bird perched on its back, which is my ability to always look forward to something approaching. Rescue, danger, companionship, the chair is facing forward and invites the viewer to join in my creative internal visual dialogue. Thank you, Suzanne. Okay, I'm going to present um, Gray Ivor Morris's piece. It is the collage on the right hand side. It is called At Play in the Animal Kingdom. Sometimes the unconscious understands um, understands us better than we know ourselves. Images come to the surface to translate their inner world to our waking self. Art can be, in a very real way, a healing process, as it was for Greg. Kim Alderman. Kim, welcome. Hey. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Um, Kim's piece is called Egyptian uh, Mother. Mother. Yes. And it is the uh, sculptural piece on the, on the pedestal there. All right. Oh, let me bring Wrong one. I wanted to stop sharing. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Welcome. Oh, it's Kim. better with the piece up there instead of me. Okay. <laughs> um, well, so, I realized the importance of art and healing in about 2002, after spending years in a meditation ashram, chanting and meditating to the goddess, and then realizing I did not have this experience in my own body as me, 
And I started a body of work to try to connect myself to this goddess, to this feminine. And I did it with clay, drawing, and writing. And I have to say that I um, am primarily, my main medium is ceramics. I've been doing ceramics since I was 15, but never anything like this. And I started channeling the unconscious. And, you know, I, I realized that... Um, clay was naturally forming itself into these goddess vessels with these marks on them that felt like language to me, not like pre-language or, you know, uh, not like pre-language, like real language, like the language of the goddess. And I, I found myself in this relational consciousness with the, the material of the earth. It's her skin. It's her most abundant element. And I got to the place where I would for, felt like I was forming clay and clay was forming me. And I didn't know who was making what, but eventually I just felt such a presence of these marks and these figures that maybe they look like they're in the, from the Neolithic, or maybe they look like they came from Western Mexico dug up. And I started realizing that these were not just archeological or historical entities. This was really a psychic reality, as that other fellow said, the primitive, maybe it still lives in the unconscious. And maybe all those years of meditating and chanting just allowed me to just drop down into it. And so Egyptian mother has that computer cord. She looked Egyptian, so I named her that simply. But um, she, um, I just, oh, I had a thing written about her. So um, it was just really a way of, of uh, symbolizing the connection to this ancient goddess and the language, it, the language that she spoke and just trying to trying to get why these marks still feel so important when I look at them, like they are like they are a language. I know it's a little aesthetically jar jarring, but for me, it, it incorporates the presence of these other older cultures, these other psychic realities that are a part of me. And the whole thing of this relational consciousness that I experienced with the earth and her skin, I find to be extremely healing. That's it. It's oh, it's also it's made of ceramic, uh, pit fired with terra sigillata slip on it. It's what the Greeks used, you probably know that, um, to seal their vases. It's not a glaze, it's not melting glass on clay, it's a clay slip. Mm. Thank you. That's it. I don't know what else. Thank you, Kim. Oh, you're welcome. Good Pleasure. To see you. All right. Um, our next person is. In person, uh, Lucinda, come on up. All right, Lucinda's piece is uh, the piece right in the center. Welcome. Oh, and Lucinda also has a uh, spoken word. Uh, piece inside um, that she discusses um, her experience with, with art and artist healing. Um, so my, my family background is both Quakers and Jews, but I wasn't really raised with any religion whatsoever. My mother told me that when I grew up, I could decide for myself that she thought all religions were against me. So You'll figure it out and good luck to you. So, um, as, as Robert knows, and a few of you know, my daughter was murdered some time ago. And I had always done art, but there was a moment in time where I just couldn't deal with color. And uh, so I started sculpting and I did, I did sculpting for a while. And, Every time I would dip my brush into cadmium red, I would fall asleep. And it was just wild. I just would fall asleep on the floor. It wasn't even I made it to a bed. I just fell asleep underneath the sofa. And it took a while, but um, yeah, I finally, I could dip my brush into cadmium red. And you can see there's cadmium red in that paint. And I was I was imagining, because of, I heard suddenly, my non-religious background, um, I was picturing the great goddess. And what would the great goddess be doing? And I thought she would see us all as blooms. And so she's filling her bucket, her two buckets with blooms. She's filling her buckets with her love for us. 
And of course, to me, the feminine is always buckets anyway. So, um, you know, that's what inspired it. You can see there's an angel kind of singing in the background out of pure joy. So, um, I, you know, I, we've had some tumultuous times and I wanted to bring some joy to the song. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Steve. Uh, Steve Parisi Gentile. Um, Steve has a uh, beautiful film as part of the um, the uh, the loop, the visuals. Uh, so welcome, Steve. Linda, thank you. Um, you've got a courageousness and bravery that's um, hard to uh, mirror and attain. And I give you a lot of credit in this small town for doing that for as many years as you have. Um, our video in the other room has to do with my own personal loss, but I kept it um, kind of wide open, not deliberately, but just it, it is what it is. You watch it and you, you paint on it what you want to paint on. Um, if it's grief, if it's happiness, if it's uh, loss, it's all of that for me, but it may not be that for you. Um, I purposely didn't put uh, music to it because I didn't want it. It that way, I wanted you to add your own music. I basically gave you the rough uh, sketch of it all. Um, what it is, is a uh, slow motion video. In reality, it took about 15 seconds to record that. It's uh, recorded at eight times the normal speed. So one second equals eight. So you got about 10 minutes worth of whatever it is you want to do on it in there to do it. Um, it's deceptively simple. It's actually the more I watch it, not simply the artist, um, the more I see in it. It plays with time and space. It plays with your perspective of where you are in relation to everything that's in there. Um, and eventually you wind up in a place that um, you realize that grief is an ongoing process. Mourning is an ongoing process. It's not something I can hold. I know when I lost my fiance. Um, everyone thought that was just a grief session done and over with it, like, you know, in a case of diarrhea or a cold or a flu, and I said, uh, screw you, um, it's now six years later, and I still miss her today. Uh, and I do move through that um, to the woman that I am currently talking with, um, and we both share that same process. That's a big okay. Life is like that. So it was meant to be a life is a bigger sleep on unfolded traditions. Um, I want to thank Robert for uh, his dedication to the community as well to gallery. I hope it's uh, sometimes difficult um, for all of us to do in this small town. So um, he's put on such a marketing show. Mm -hmm. They're just uh, mm -hmm. some that just did this much. So thank well, you. <laughs> I just I just wanted to just say something real quick uh, before we close with all the video. Um, I'm not an artist. I wish I could do any of this, um, but I do write. That's my art. That's my therapy. And the night before we opened the show, I decided to share some of my work um, as part of this show because my my poetry is healing. It's a it's an inner reflection. It's me working out the issues that I can deal with, that I deal with. I've been going through some personal issues. One of them is caring for a 90-year-old mother who's on her way out, um, which has been very, very difficult for me. Um, and I've been writing uh, to whatever it is, you know, to get it out of me, to put it into the world, to um, give me some kind of release. So as part of the video, I just wanted to share a couple of things. Uh, so um, I there's as I mentioned there's about six six videos there plus uh, a couple of three of Linda's recent ones. Um, so if you have the time today or any time before the uh, before the show closes, I encourage you to go have a look. Uh, come back multiple times if you'd like. It, it is on a loop, um, but you can also find it on YouTube and watch it at home. So just go to the Emerge Gallery uh, YouTube channel, and then there you'll see uh, our Art of this Healing playlist. Um, and you can uh, watch Lucinda, Steve, um, Matthew, um, 
Kathleen, Joan, uh, who did I miss? Me, uh, 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 Rogerson, um, Matt, Matt Rogerson. Um, if I missed anyone else, I'm sorry. So uh, please, you know, because it, it is an important part of this show. Um, you know, it has its own room, but um, for a reason. Uh, so it's nice and dark in there, and you can you know, uh, mute yourself. Um, okay. So that's it for the video portion. Um, Suzanne's going to come up and tell us about uh, Edwin Sapir's piece, which is the Celtic, uh, Celtic piece right behind you. And I am going to bring it up on the screen. The work of Celtic Sunrise had a trying birth. It's not until the last moment after working and reworking the single spontaneous daring act created the dawn revelation. I've always gravitated to art that conveys a sense of the sacred, art that sparks imagination and reflection, art that appears fresh with repeated viewings. To me, an ideal work of art opens a door of imagination in the mind and the heart of the reader. It is with its humble yet lofty aspiration that this work is being submitted. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for Evelyn. Uh, next is um, Anne Morris, which is the collage right above um, the Celtic piece. It's called Build, and it's a monotype machine collage. Art is life. I have always been an artist. I work in clay, pastel, printmaking, mixed media, collage, encaustics, fiber art, and on and on in varying degrees and intensities. As a result, I am never bored and always learning. I've studied with many teachers in New York City and the Hudson Valley and at present spend a lot of time at the Woodstock School of Art. This mixed media drawing was a stream of consciousness piece that felt organic and visceral as I was doing it. All of my work once completed leaves me with a feeling of healing that I can only get from her. Okay, and then our last piece is definitely an homage to uh, Linda uh, by Laura Copsey. Um, Laura had to be Oh, she, she was did. here. Yeah, oh, she was. She, okay. She had an appointment in Woodstock and she was so Oh, I okay. Don't, I don't have a statement about her. Um, I can read it from here. Yeah, I can read it from here. Okay. This chicken is flying through the cosmos in touch with the chakras and enjoying the warmth of the sun and the emotional support of the lotus flower. This is my homage to the life and work of Linda Montana. Loving color as I do, I was enthralled by her wearing the chakra colors year by year for seven years. I was also inspired by the playfulness of all her work, including her chicken motifs and her spirited spiritual chicken dance which you'll have an opportunity to see again coming up and participate in. I've always had the opportunity to perform with her. I've had the opportunity to perform with her several times. In addition, art equals healing. She also practices work equals play. Okay. Uh, that's it. Um, that's it for the art. So, yes. Yeah, so um, just uh, wanna thank everybody for coming. Um, and just remind everyone that um, there are many more events, many more events to come. <laughs> um, one thing that I'm very excited about, yeah. one thing that I'm really excited about is um, the uh, screening of Linda's, two of Linda's films that are, that are coming up at the Orpheum November 8th. And we just recently learned that we're gonna be joined by two special guests. Um, Te Ching, who was, um, Te, 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 am I pronouncing his name? Yes. Right. You're doing good. Okay, great. <laughs> um, who, um, 40 years ago, this is the 40th anniversary celebration, um, uh, had this was the picture of the, yes. uh, uh Linda and Te Ching tied, tied themselves together by the eight foot rope and spent one year together. Um, unable to touch, um, I'm sure you learned a lot of valuable things about human relationship um, during that year, which, um, you know, if, 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 if you come on the 8th, you'll have an opportunity to um, see them again 
and talk about it. I'm also really pleased to have uh, Toby with you, uh, with, who's going to be joining us, who um, has been working with Linda for the past 25 years on, on creating more than, is it more than 60 films? Yeah. 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 Um, which are all, you know, mo many of them available on YouTube. Um, so uh, some of them short, some of them a little longer. Um, and just going through this whole process, I mean, it's, it's been remarkable how much of, of your work is available. Um, online to see, including, um, you know, Mitchell's film, the, 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 the film that you did on anorexia, um, you know, really archival material. So I, I encourage you, you know, to, to make the time to go and have a look at those because they, they really are remarkable. This is the reason why we're here so mm -hmm. um, So Suzanne, Suzanne, tell us what else we have. Uh, well, we have uh, the performances you heard about, uh, performances from Will Nixon and from Mikkel, and those will be on, uh, I don't have the calendar in front of me, it was November 4th, and then repeated again a week later, and Linda actually will start that afternoon off, starts at 3 o'clock, with, uh, with a meditation. A laughing cry. This is the laughing cry, laughing cry meditation, and then we'll hear, and then we'll hear those two two performances. They're fairly short; they're they're under fifteen minutes. So, so that will be that afternoon, and then we have the film at the Orpheum, and we have then in the closing night, um, Linda will appear as uh, uh, Bob Dylan, and with Paul McMahon, uh, and and they will sing. And we will have more chicken dances. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? Uh, uh, Ariana's uh, yes. feelings yes. and the two chicken dancers. And yes. Julia. Yes. Yes. Well, she, and then, you know, she'll, she'll be at the film. Yeah. yeah, she'll be at the Orpheum. She will be doing some recording for a wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. musician. And uh, yeah, so she'll be back with us soon. And also, we should, should we should say that the, the films that we'll be seeing they'll be interactive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, you will be able to voice your your responses to, to the films as they play. So, which will so be, it'll be followed by a Q and A. Yeah, have a on stage. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, the, I also wanted to mention there's two other exhibits as part of this whole yes, celebration. Yes. Um, if you haven't been to uh, the uh, JJ Newberry, uh, the JJ Newberry um, Arts and Marketplace, um, in the back they have a really wonderful exhibition space. Uh, Sabine Recklow and um, Stephen Whistler both are exhibiting um, some of their work there. Um, and in, in Stephen, Stephen's work is really in response to the fires in California and uh, you know, how they affected him. A really, really interesting interpretation of that, and and Sabina's is in response to thinking about that we will in time probably have to live in different kinds of structures than we might have, and so she has created this, this whole series of pictures, very miracle kinds of kinds of structures. So I encourage you to see to see those as well as. Robert, what a huge orchestrated technical aesthetic curated program. Well, <laughs> all of the artists involved in this. Uh, I did want to mention that the show at the gal at my gallery, Birch Gallery, is uh, based on the Fourteen Station Files, which is how this whole thing started. Linda came to us with with the idea that she's like, I have these frames. I have to do something with them because she was getting back some um, some art that from a museum uh, or the frames from them. And so what we decided was um, to uh, take a second look, or in some cases for some of the artists, a first look at the uh, Stations of the Cross, which uh, for those who don't know, it's a Catholic devotional that tells in 14 steps the process of Jesus's um, um, Accusation to you know to 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 his crucifixion and his mother's arms. In, yeah, there's there's thirteen different people helping him along the way, people stumbling him, meeting the women, um, him meeting his mother. So um, Linda chose uh, seven artists, and then myself, Suzanne, and Krista chose uh, seven artists as well to participate. 
each artist, uh, Linda had put together the 14 stations and updated them with prompts to include things such as uh, bullying, body dysmorphia, feminism, um, environmentalism, which, which to me, growing up as a Catholic boy, really, um, you know, the stations of the cross is something that I'm just a little, you know, a little standoffish. Um, but this healed me. Uh, healed that little that little Catholic king, you know, swinging around the incense and the, all the other stuff up on stage or up on the altar. Yeah, I just want to mention the word miracle, and I want you to feel it. I want you to feel it. I want you to feel it. I want you to feel the real. This is happening. It's happening. I mean, in the walls, in each other, from this incredible output out in, from the hair, from that miraculous hair, everyone, the curators of creating this. Many, many circles, and that's the energy of the feeling, heart, relationship, someone else here, someone else here, someone else here really touched something, something. This is something not to be. Theological Jesus role. Someone touched the world and it's here. This is healing. This, this is this is healing. And it's very hot. Not just in the energy of the shock. So use it. Use it. Go someplace. Some person send it to them. Come put come back to it. Feel it, feel it, feel it. Feel it in your blood. Feel it, feel your blood. It's it's bubbling. Inside the bone. Four reasons. Pressure. Expectation. Not just with energy. Feel it. Use it. Go higher, higher, higher. Very hot. It's very beautiful. And it's very joyful. And it cuts through and it fingers. And we swim in it. We're swimming. We're all swimming. Store it up. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. That's, that's our program. <laughs> uh, two thanks again to Linda, to all of the artists, to Joan Lamb, to the uh, to all of the, all of the volunteers uh, that have really helped us pull this off. Uh, so um, please have a look around. All the artists available online as well if you'd like to spend time uh, with the statements and with the art. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.